and Troy Malcolm coming to you with the Troy Malcolm and Adrian Bow podcast. It's episode 136 and Troy and I have had a fantastic uh, three days up at the Gold Coast, Troy. Uh, obviously a combination of ARIC and mastery and it was terrific in terms of both contribution and learning. And certainly uh, the bonus there was getting to hang out and, uh, and uh, network with a lot of industry uh, people that were uh, definitely, you know, come in contact with for so many years. Yeah, Adrian, it's, uh, it's almost like a school reunion in many cases. It feels like that every time you go to Ari, you know, some of the relationships and the people that you see at those type of events, everyone's busy and it's very hard to catch up during the year. But Arik is definitely one of those that I always look forward to because I think it's great to not only see the people that you see every day, but also get to see those people that you haven't probably seen for 12 months. And there were so many people that I was just so happy to see and smile and, you know, give them a hug and say, hey, haven't seen you for a couple of years. How are you kind of thing? Um, mm. It was a really good event. It was record numbers. Adrian, the, the speaker lineup um, was, was unreal. Uh, there was not one person or one speaker, uh, both in the sales side, the keynote side, and also the property management side that hasn't mm. had rave reviews from the audience. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about that today, but um, yeah, I was, mate, I walked away with a smile on my face. I know that we just made our flight on the way home. Yeah. We did, um, we with did, minutes, yeah. Minutes to spare. We're actually lucky it got a little bit delayed. Otherwise, we would have missed it. Um, yeah. But no, it was great. It was great hanging out. Are we going to share some ideas today? Yeah, absolutely. So, look, what we've found, uh, Troy, over Eric, is that even though you take notes, which which we did, um, what we find is is you might write down something that one of the, the speakers said verbatim, word by word, but sometimes you write something down that triggers one of the speaker's actual comments and it's an interpretation. So what we're going to do over the next few episodes is is throw a couple of key takeaways that Troy and I um, embraced, but but also uh, decipher our interpretation of that, what the translation piece is in the real estate uh, space because a lot of the speakers were non-real estate which I think is fantastic and um, so we'll de definitely do that I think before we kick off though it'd be remiss of us not to uh, pay our most sincere and um, genuine condolences to two real estate uh, icons well known in the real estate industry that have passed away over the last couple of weeks one obviously Brent Courtney a McGrath veteran specialist in Lane Cove uh, only in his late 40s um, survived by his wife and three children, terribly, terribly sad. And Troy also, most recently, Angelo Nicholas, who spent most of his career with Harris Partners um, in South Australia, uh, only around 30 years of age, um, extremely sad, both um, taken way too early and both taken by this epidemic um, and ridiculous uh, uh, disease known as cancer. And, uh, you know, so we, we, we would be remiss of us, Troy, not to, not to pay our respects, you know, because we both, both knew them and a lot of the people listening did, did know them as well. Yeah, and two, two, of, two of the good, good people, Adrian, and losing mm -hmm. anyone at any time isn't easy, but when you see uh, their contribution uh, and what they did, you know, uh, Brent BC was, was a, a top performing agent, but mm. someone that gave so much back to McGrath over his tenure, mm. Um, mm. culturally, but performance and then sharing ideas and developing staff. And Angela yeah. recently, I mean, it was only 12 months ago that he was on the Eric stage. Um, yeah. You know, sharing his insights and mm. it's hard. It's hard, AB, a, 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 because um, I knew them both. Um, obviously, BC a little bit better than and Angelo, but most recent times I did get to know Angelo, and mm. um, it's there, there's always a lesson. I find with these things, um, there's always a lesson, and you know, whenever you do something, I, I, I have been thinking to myself most recently um, before we heard the tragic news about Angelo with BC mm. that you know he's he used to say to his kids every night, um, you know, a couple of words, and I just they really resonated with me. And I think, you know, when you see and you hear things from people and you get an insight into their values of what, what they do and how they do it, it makes you stop and think. It makes you stop and think about your life and the legacy you want to leave and the story you want to tell. And yeah, it's yeah. incredibly sad, but we're so lucky to have 
them part of our industry so lucky for for their loved ones to have them part of their lives and it's uh, yeah. we just we, we just you know extend our sincere condolences obviously to the families and, and all the friends as well it's a tight little community we have here ab it's a tight little real yeah. community it's not i know we think we're big but it's actually a very small community so yeah yeah it's so true and it's things like eric we bring people together you know we get Four thousand people there. There's only forty odd thousand agents in Australia, so it is it is quite small. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's um, so I'm, I'm just glad we had the opportunity just to to wish our, our our love and prayers to the family and friends, and um, thanks to both of them for their contribution to the industry and and also just 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 to um, to life in general. Um, you know, and uh, they'll certainly be missed. So, Troy, on to um, on to key takeaways. So I'll leave yeah. it to you in order to nominate the speaker and the key takeaway, and then we can uh, decipher what it means to us. And that could obviously help our listeners as well. Yeah, AB, I've got uh, I've got a lot of talking points for each speaker. So we may need to... Um, my dog's are going to talk about that. Live TV, everyone. That's um, it. I've, uh, I've got a lot of talking points for a lot of the speakers. So it's kind of one of those things that... Uh, if we don't get through all of the content that we want to talk yeah. about, we might do this over the next couple of episodes because I know yeah. as well that people, they come come back from Eric and they've got a lot of great insights and they write them all down mm. and they implement maybe one or two thing and things and then, you know, like two or three weeks later, we get back to being busy and we forget all the great stuff we heard. Um, I think it would be silly not to start with Matthew McConaughey, uh, AB. I think, um, you know, he's been well publicised, um, his journey and... You know, I got a lot from him talking about being 100% present. And I think yeah. a lot of agents, he's, he's, you know, he would say that if he, the synergy between acting and also real estate at a listing presentation is actually quite closely aligned. They you yeah. go into an audition as an actor and he, he said, um, you know, if you go in 85%, your chances are you're not going to get it. So you have to be 100% present uh, and you have to be 100% willing to give it your all uh, to get those parts. And I think with real estate, you know, sometimes we have been caught out in the past. We, we have been going to listing presentations and we're, we're busy. We're thinking about something else. Maybe we've got offers coming in on other properties and whatnot. And so yeah. being 100% present uh, in the moment you're in, I think that that is, that is very much one of his key points that I just thought, you know what, that's so relevant to both industries. Uh, and uh, that was my first takeaway. Yeah. And I think it's, a, it's, it's certainly something that we've heard in the past and it's, it, it, it could almost sound cliche, but um, you know, I think in real estate, it's, it's even more relevant than most industries because when you think about it, Troy, We've got so many verticals in this industry, you know, as agents, especially, we're either prospecting, we're listing, we're negotiating, we're vendor managing, we're doing buyer work. And when you think about it, it's very easy to juggle all those and almost become like a like an activity salad, you know, you throw them all in the mix together. But I've got to say that being present at a listing appointment uh, in terms of being laser beam focused rather than having your phone in your pocket on vibrate mode and thinking, well, who's calling me? Who's contacting me? You know, that that's something that I just feel is unacceptable. You know, and I think unless you can give 100% and walk in to a listing or walk into a vendor negotiation or walk into a, a, a buyer appointment and actually be present, then I don't think we deserve to turn up. Um, now, the flip side to that, Troy, is when we're... Um, when we're actually performing our downtime with our family and friends equally equally Troy you know like so I have to coach a lot of high performance people Troy I'm talking people that do 100 to 300 sales a year and one of my big lessons to them because often their partner will call me and say look you know coaching's going great he's got to this point but he or she's just not present at home. So one of my rules for them, which is I practice myself, uh, and I know, Troy, you're really good at this, especially on Sundays, but I do it during the week. I pick a time. Some, some people's time will be different. Might be six, might be seven, might be eight, might be, but you've got to pick a time and you've got to plug the phone in. You've got to put it on airplane mode or put, you've got to put the alarm on for the day 
uh, um, after and just not look at it until then because uh, I don't care what anyone says. There's there's nothing after the time you nominate, whether it's seven o'clock or eight o'clock, that that can't wait till the next day. And it becomes it's, it's become habitual more than anything. You know that you just look at it. You're having dinner or even just watching TV or you know with your family. It just becomes habitual and, and completely unnecessary. So being present is not just work orientated. C- certainly being present once you dissect all the different activities in real estate: listing, prospecting, vendor management, buyer work, but then also family whether that's after hours or Sundays or your day off yeah yeah and most people that know me know that I am the hardest man to track down on a Sunday I uh with certain habits there's a routine that I follow on a Sunday and it prepares me for the week um so anyone knows that if they try to call me on a Sunday they never get me right and I pride myself on that I don't it doesn't mean I don't see it but I also know that uh, the importance of balance, doing six days a week um, consistently yeah. for the past kind of 10 years, uh, longer in many cases, but definitely coin auctions. It's my one day where I just get to unplug, as you said. Adrian, the other yeah. one that um, I got from Matthew was he talked a lot about the fact that he, he, he spoke to his father with confidence about mm. wanting to give up his degree and go to become an actor. Um, to, mm. to continue with his profession and become an actor. Mm. And he said it was the gravitas within his voice that mm. was the difference between not uh, having his father question his ability and question his motive to giving him full confidence to say, go all in, do a great job. Yeah. And I really think that that was another key point for me. It's like, how many times do we believe something, but we don't actually give it the energy the conviction and the gravitas that we see that could mm. be all the difference, whether it's talking mm. to a client, whether it's having a, a meeting with a partner in a business or whether it's pitching for business. So I think that, mm. you know, and, and again, a lot of these people have heard them before, right? So this is where we get to is that it's open to interpretation. And if you mm. break down each one of the Arab speakers, and we're not going to break down every single one, but if you did break down mm. every one of the Arab speakers, you would probably say, yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah, I've heard that before. I've heard that before. Yeah. It's like, okay, so what are you doing with it? What are mm. you doing? With it? What are you, what's the lesson for you as an individual? And how are you changing the way that you do business mm. to improve? And I think that that's where a lot of people do get unstuck. And I'm slightly going off, uh, off topic here, but I think that's where a lot of people do get stuck when they go to events like Eric. They write down a notebook like this. They have a notebook mm. and they write down as many notes as possible. And they don't know that part of understanding to implementation. And so not only today, we're going to talk about some of the great ideas that we had, but over the coming weeks, Adrian, we will go talk about, well, how do you implement that in? So what are the Mm. steps to actually implementing? But to me, that, that he's, he's the way that he, he had that conversation with his father was, was pretty impressive. Now, also on that, on the, on, on the flip side of that is that he said he got the first two roles he went for. And then he had mm. two years of not getting another role. But mm. he was persistent because you think if you were an early starter and a great, you know, early adopter, you get those two roles and you think, right, this is awesome. I'm going to make it. And then two yeah. years of not getting another key role, that really sets you up for question, right? That's really kind of getting you to the point where you're like, I don't know whether this industry is for me. And think about it in real estate. We get upset if we miss one, two or three listings in a row. This guy mm. missed two years of roles before he got another one and the persistence he said you've got to out persist the competition you've got to outperform them so be 100 percent there but then you've also got to also out persist them and i really think those three key points for me there's a, there's a million of them as i said but mm. those three are the ones that have popped up on my screen that are in bold um they're mm. the ones that i think are probably relevant to today's uh to today's episode yeah i agree troy um you know and i think the conviction or of the way you deliver a message, whether it's delivering an offer, whether it's delivering your unique selling proposition at a listing, whether it's um, the way you deliver your accountability within your own team, there needs to be conviction, there needs to be um, some gravitas, as you said, and there needs to be a level of confidence that you're perceived and believed to be that trusted advisor in, in, in your particular field. And for us, it's, it's being real estate because, you know, what, what happens is you don't see a lot of doctors, lawyers or accountants giving fluffy recommendations, you know, like they're, they're very direct in their recommendation. They're very indiscriminate 
in their recommendations. So what I mean by that, whether it's good or bad news, they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll provide it to you, but then provide a solution, you know? So like us, if we deliver an offer, sure, it may not be the best news, but let's provide a solution to the owner. Uh, or if our campaign's off track, sure, it's a, it's a potential challenge, but there are solutions there. And I think that was one of the themes, certainly that, that you and I, learned at mastery and taught both on stage troy was go into solution mode rather than sell mode because solution is where it's at that's what that's what our buyers want that's what our sellers want that's what our team wants that's what all stakeholders of real estate are after is they don't want to be sold to they want to they want to have a, a solution presented to them because all of us have challenges whether it's our vendors wanting to downsize our buyers wanting to get out of their uh uh, out of renting, whether it's our team member who wants to progress from being, you know, a lead generator to an associate, whatever the case may be. So solutions are really important in this industry. Well, yeah, it's actually a great segue because the next next key topic and next key speaker we had was Seth Godham. And mm. Seth spoke uh, one of his many points, but he said, solve the problem. Don't sell mm. the product. And yeah. Treat different people differently. So how often mm. do we go into a lounge room and we roll out the same listing presentation, we roll out the same marketing structure, we roll out the same fee structure, we roll mm. out the same open for inspection pack, we fit the open for inspections in the time that suits us as opposed to best benefiting the property. We don't think about mm. having open for inspections on Sundays because that's our day off, but that's the best time for the property because it's on a busy road and we know Sundays there's less traffic. All of those types of things, mm. he actually, I mean, Seth, is it, we, we, we were very privileged. We had it twice, right? So we had mm. two these sessions and we could probably do 15 episodes on the content that he provided. Um, mm. Really relevant that you said, don't, don't just try and be the selling of the product of real estate. Don't be transactional. Make sure you solve yeah. the problem and don't sell the product and treat them differently. Treat each one of the circumstances differently, which I know, Adrian, you've been a big, big advocate for. And very, yeah. probably one of the first in the industry to be a big advocate of not just going, what are you looking for? Beds, bus, cars, street. Um, mm. you, know, you actually went deeper with a lot of your clients and worked out why they wanted to live in that street because it was close to schools. Why did they want to have that house? Because they needed two car park. All of those types mm. of things, you actually yeah. generated interest and levels of longevity and clients for life based on the questions you asked. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think the point that Seth made about treat different people differently I, I love that because there's so many interpretations in our industry the only caveat i've got with that is don't change process so process you, you can treat different people differently but it doesn't mean your process has got to change okay. um and and it doesn't mean that you have to be unauthentic either because you know, that's that's why I love these key takeaways. They're so subjective because, you know, someone might hear treat different people differently and they might think, oh, does that mean you've got to put on a mask? Does that mean you've got to be unauthentic? Does that mean you've got to be a chameleon? Does that mean you've got to change your values? No, not at all. It just means that if you're pitching to a 40-year-old uh, high net worth CEO uh, and then you're pitching to an 85-year-old lady who's lived in a house for, you know, 70 years, and, um, and, and wants to tell you her life story, your process will be the same, but your energy, your delivery, your tonality, everything was gonna, is going to be slightly nuanced, right? Um, and, and you don't have to change your values. You don't have to put any masks on. It's still you. Um, you're still going to talk about your unique selling propositions, both personally and at a brand level. You're still going to talk about, you know, why you feel that that your marketing plan is world's best why you think that your presentation plan is world's best why you think um you know that you know getting onto the market at a certain point is the most appropriate thing to do so but the, you, your energy and your tonality you know um would 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 be slightly nuanced there and i think that just makes sense last two before we let our listeners go and save some more yep. for next week adrian was yep. Seth said two other things and these i know we were sitting next to each other when he mentioned yep. both of these and the first one was uh for the first time in history our customer knows more than what we do mm. and i know that uh you and i looked at each other and kind of just had a little smile to each other because we know that we know yep. that Customers are looking for a specific uh, product. They're looking for a specific type of product. 
And they know more than us for the first time in history because they do their research. They're probably mm. more, gran more granular on that certain type of property than we are because we see the total landscape. And mm. so that one, I know we both looked at each other and we thought, yeah, you know what, that's 100% right. They can go onto their phone, they can search, they can see the yeah. recent sales, they can see what's, what's happening in regards to interest rates, all election kind of stuff that's now all in the past. But they, mm. they know that. They know that. So. Yeah we have to and i guess it goes to our previous point about treating different people differently you need to be mm. able to educate and treat them as students as opposed to just customers absolutely and look the part i love about this troy is it it, it actually breeds transparency um, which really our consumer whether it's buyers or sellers they, they love transparency they want to know if something's sold what it's sold for they want to know if there's a property for sale has it got a price guide uh, published you know as long as we're not in queensland and it's an auction which is the only area we can't do but you know everything else should have a published price guide on it um you know and if someone contacts us we need to have automation at our disposal whether it's an auto reply like people want information quickly because our competition is no other real estate agents it's like everything else they're engaging with which is you know an airline or or, or amazon or whatever it might be everything's quick and easy you know so i think we're to be really careful and i love the accountability part of of transparency as well because you know you got to walk your talk agents there should be no untruths in our industry and you know i, I remember you know working you'd be pre-internet days troy and you know there were a lot of agents who uh who handled the truth very carelessly and used hyperbole because they could in those days. I'm not suggesting that was that was the way to do business, but you know they got away with it because you know there was no accountability, there was no records, there was nothing. You know, so um, and I'm glad that that's no longer the case, and I'm glad that that consumers, both buyers and sellers, have access to the same information we do uh, because transparency and accountability is where it's at. Always wins, always wins. Mm. Um, mm. The final one that we had, Adrian, was, and I think it was, uh, it was again, Seth, that Seth mentioned this. He said that uh, everyone needs to become a better storyteller. And I know that we've spoken mm. about this. We talk about the way that you frame uh, a listing presentation, but also your dialogue with anyone uh, in the industry. But he said, uh, we were all born naked, afraid, and unable to speak. We yes. all have the ability to become better storytellers. And I just thought, <laughs> it was actually quite, I mean, it was funny at the time because everyone laughed, but at the same time, mm. I thought, oh, what a great point. And how often do we overlook that? How often do mm. we overlook the fact that we say, there's five photos that need to be done for a campaign to go live. And it's like, well, yeah. you can say a lot, but why do we take the photos? What's the creative mm. approach? Are they architectural or are they quick photos? How many times do you take a photo and then stitch it together with all the other resolutions? So I think we need to take the time and realize the points that our clients need, which is going back again to our original point, treat different people mm. differently and know what resonates with them. Have a deeper understanding of the client's needs and you'll get to that point that, you will become a great story filler because you will have a deeper connection. You'll have that trust. Yeah, what I loved about that comment, Troy, about, you know, we're all born naked, afraid and unable to speak was that it's, everything's a choice in life. You know, like, so there's two people that are born that way. One ends up, you know, Oprah Winfrey, another one, for example, ends up, um, you know, someone addicted to, to cocaine, for example, you know, like, why is that the case? And, you know, sure, there's some factors that are that can influence people um, in terms of their surroundings, but I would say the high majority of things in life are choices. And, you know, we all started the same way. And, and it, it's actually really encouraging for everyone to hear that because it means it's it's not all innate. It's not, you know, a lot of it is acquired skills in life. You know, a lot of people, oh, you know, I don't have good genes or, you know, I wasn't born, you know, smarter. That, that's a story in my yeah. opinion. That, that really is a story. And we often talk about stories holding you back, stories, you know, making you stuck. And it's a matter of, you know, letting go of those mooring lines and, and, and lifting those um, limited beliefs, which is really what they are, and disempowering emotions. They're also disempowering emotions. So, you know, I think that was very encouraging to anyone who, who might have been under the illusion that they weren't born with the right chromosomes or, or, or DNA, that that's actually just bullshit. That's a story. You can actually acquire any skill. You can acquire any habit in life if you dedicate, you know, 10,000 hours into any specialty that you're, uh, that you're interested in. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, that's it. Episode number 136. 
think that's it. Yeah. yeah. That's us. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what episode we're up to. 136. <laughs> we'll get to 150 soon for sure. There's definitely, definitely an app. Definitely an appetite there. And we're going to start to reshape the um, the podcast team. We're going to tie it into the academy as well. So keep an eye out for that. You can join the academy, but Troy and I are going to do something really cool together on that. Uh, if you just go to adrianbow.com, look for academy, but there's going to be some really cool stuff coming up with Troy and I working together on some things. So we really look forward to it. Perfect. Until next week, listeners, we'll see you all very soon. Make sure you rate us five stars in any of the podcast areas that you love to listen to them. Can't wait to see you, AB, no doubt. Speak to you during the week. Uh, But yeah, listeners, we'll be back same time, same channel. Uh, Check in with us. Bye for now. Thanks. Thanks, Troy.